Sherry, Rick, um, you both participated in a recent performance horse uh, committee meeting. Then there was a fair bit of discussion around routine uh, or quote unquote maintenance joint injections. What's your um, take on the definition and the different issues that the committee grappled with? I think the term maintenance joint injection is a fallacious term. I don't really know what a maintenance joint injection. I, I think that term has come into use by many people for lack of an, any other means of, of, of understanding what the veterinarian is doing. In, in our case, in our practice, we believe very, very strongly that horses should have periodic evaluations. That might be uh, a means of maintaining the horse in terms of evaluating it and making sure that it is in fact healthy and that it's able to do its job. And in that process, examining the horse thoroughly, some new issue unknown before may arise that we see. But that's a way of maintaining the health of the horse, but maintenance joint injections are, just because it's been six months, if the joint's not sore, why are we treating it? Yeah, I, I agree completely. I think it, I think there is a difference for me between a maintenance, what's considered a maintenance injection and maintaining the horse. I think those are two totally separate scenarios that have for some reason gotten lumped together. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that a lot of times these maintenance injections are used as artificial confidence um, in certain situations by trainers and owners, they get this, we need it, and we need it in order for the horse to be the best it can be. And I just, I, I'm not clear that that's actually the best thing for the horse. Um, you know, there's risks every single time we enter a joint, there's a risk of something going wrong in a variety of ways. And it should be viewed as a very, very sacred process. And the term maintenance to me is pretty, implies it's casual, we do it, this is what we do, and things carry on and go well. And it's kind of analogous to someone, you know, considering a, a cosmetic procedure, you know, you know, they, they think they need it um, and they want it. They don't need it to live, but they still want it, and they know there's a lot of risk associated with that procedure. So for me, it's somewhat of a weird analogous scenario to consider. Um, but definitely my personal preference is to at least start with the, the exam piece. Um, a lot of times people will come on and they have it in their head, I want X, Y, Z done, and at least doing the exam piece of it, I'm able to start a conversation with them about why they want that. Is it an option to go in a stepwise approach to this scenario? Do we have time you know, to do some diagnostics? Is that an option? And, kind of understanding what their goals are and where they're coming from into why they want that has always been a useful um, thing for me to do. So I start with the exam, even if they're begrudging and they're in a hurry, um, let's just slow down and take the time to do it and uh, go from there. Yeah, and that was a question that I wanted to pose, so thanks, thanks for answering it. Um, I'll pose the question and uh, put it out there for you, Rick. So you have a client that comes to you and they are from St. Elsewhere and they typically, right before the big show, have the hawks, stifles, and coffin joints injected. Any tips on how um, you deal with that or you would suggest others might deal with that scenario? Well, the first thing I would want to do is try to get a history on the horse and really try to find out when this was done and why it was done. Um, I wouldn't just automatically refuse. However, I would try to engage the client in a conversation much as you were just describing about, you know, what, it, what has been the result? How often have you been doing this? Who, who last did it? Can I communicate with them? Because I really try to do that if I can, because I, I really want to know the, the, the information, because it's so often that the client or trainer really doesn't know exactly what was done, nor do they understand exactly what medications were used and, and so forth. Um, I think uh, multiple joint injections, uh, 
when, when I first started in practice, we were very serious about injecting joints. And it wasn't, and we've become very, all of us have become somewhat cavalier about joint injections in terms of the potential hazards that could be involved. Um, so I just try to have a reasonable conversation and say, let me just have a look at the horse. Maybe we just need a little help up front, or maybe we just need a little help for his, his or her hocks, or maybe it's none of the above, and you know, you're, you're reading into it something that's not there. Um, I, I try to engage them that way, and I try to get them to let me look at the horse. And I've, I have had clients where they say, no, that's not what I want. If you can't do that, then and we, we, well, have a nice day. And yeah. uh, we go on about our we go on about our business because I think building integrity in your practice and being known for being objective, uh, not objectionable, is important. Yeah. So it's okay to say no. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I think that standing your ground, if you don't, if you don't feel confidently that it's in the best interest of the horse, is an okay thing to do. Um, and building a, trying to build a reputation around doing things that are best for the horse and that make sense and that are evidence-based or clinically exam-driven in origin, I think is, is the best way. And I've told people it's not a drive-through service. You don't come to the window, order this, and <laughs> get what you want. Um, you know, there needs to be some care and some consideration into what we're doing. So. I think as long as people understand that it's it's not coming from a place of I don't want to give you what you want I just want to do the best thing for your horse I think they resonate with that and that I think is a, a really important piece yeah. you're both there for the horse you just may think that that means different things and getting to the middle ground of what that means is I think the important piece